Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Wanna go over an absolute train wreck that happened with First Descendant's launch yesterday. Uh, quite the disaster. I have been playing First Descendant, and I know that there's some mixed reception towards the game. Look, there's a lot of comparisons to Warframe and Destiny. I'm not a big Destiny guy these days. Not a big Warframe guy these days. What I will say is I'm playing First Descendant, and I am having a good time with it. And, um, you know, obviously, this game is riddled with microtransactions. I don't know how to enunciate it the correct way to really emphasize the fact that this game is, like, inf uh, infested probably isn't the right word. Like, guys, a free-to-play game, microtransactions are gonna be a reality of the experience, but, uh, Yo, they finna be making millions off some of these ultimate descendants, and I, I, I'm gonna be real with you guys, I bet you Nexon has already made a, a, a killing off the ultimate bunny uh, that they're selling. 5,000 credits or whatever it is, like, and what I don't like is how the microtransactions are done. Why can't we have like a one-to-one -one conversion where a hundred of the credits or whatever is a dollar or valued at a dollar? No, 500 credits is $10 and so on and so forth. And then, you know, as you buy more, you do get bonus credits. Like, yeah, you, you know, you know how this game is played. You know how they be with uh, stuff like this. But nevertheless, with a game that has this level of microtransactions and monetization, you would hope that the monetization elements work. But in fact, yesterday, there was a huge, huge train wreck of people trying to buy things like the Battle Pass. That seems to be, you know, what most sensible people are just buying. Like, I don't think it's a big deal whatsoever of getting a free-to-play game, playing it for a little bit, and if you enjoy the initial experience... Paying $10 for the Battle Pass, like, you're already getting value out of it, you might as well, uh, if, if you're enjoying the game, get the Battle Pass, it's not a super expensive purchase, like, I don't think that is the worst idea in the world, and I always usually push back on microtransactions, but my perception on microtransactions greatly varies when it comes to a free-to-play game versus... A $70 game like Ubisoft dropping Assassin's Creed and then it being uh, microtransaction infested. Don't get me wrong, First Descendant is microtransaction infested. The level of cosmetic microtransactions and even non-cosmetics is insane. But circling back to the initial point, there was an issue of people buying the premium currency and then not being compensated with the premium currency to buy the Battle Pass. That is a complete egregious. I cannot quantify how egregious of an issue that is given the level of uh, monetization that this game has. So you're gonna do that level of monetization and you're gonna screw people over even if it was for a limited time. Even if you got it resolved, that is absolutely ridiculous and I cannot uh, believe that that could happen. However, they did make things right and they put out a post. We sincerely apologize once again for the inconvenience caused by the issues that occurred during the opening day. As a token of our apology, we prepared a compensation. We will continue to strive to provide a more stable service. Recipients on how to claim the Award. All descendants who log in until July 7th uh, at midnight will receive the compensation in their mailbox. Mail expiration date compensation mail will expire on 1159 Pacific Time, July 14th. So you'll have a little bit of time uh, to take advantage of that. Please make sure to claim the compensation before the mail expires. You'll get gold gain boost, thir uh, th boost 30%. Kuiper Shard gain boost 30%, Descendant EXP gain boost 30%, Weapon Mastery EXP gain boost 30%, and 2x Mat Red Points boost items will be active immediately upon claiming them from the mailbox, so you'll get that. And then they also noted that there's some delay with the Twitch drops. That's not as big of a deal. Those are just Twitch drops. But people actually spending money and having things delayed, yeah, that's a problem. The servers initially when the game dropped were actually working pretty fine for me like it was easy to get in game's a complete disaster today as i'm recording this video you cannot get on the game it is legitimately impossible and there are 30,000 people concurrently on the first descendant right now no the game is just straight up down 
in terms of getting on. Yesterday, there was over 200,000 players. I initially looked at the concurrent player count, and I saw that it dropped to 100,000, and I was like, okay, that's a sizable drop, but things like that happen after day one peak. Uh, if the game is going to fall off, that's how it's going to happen. It's going to drop to 100,000. Then I realized, oh, this drop-off is because the servers are a train wreck right now, and you can't get on the game as I'm recording this video. The fact that it's dropped to 30,000, again, that's a huge issue, and it really does halt any momentum, and I don't know the, the staying power that the first descendant is going to have. Um, to me, it doesn't feel like it has the momentum of Helldivers right now, not even close, to be perfectly honest. Like, Helldivers, when that came out, even amidst the server issues, it was just resonating a lot on social media, and generally speaking, I feel like I'm not perfect when it comes to gauging social media interests, but I have my finger on the pulse a little bit, a little bit, and, um, uh, the first descendant, I'm just not noticing it to that level, and I see there's interest in the game right now for sure, but I could see it uh, falling off fairly quickly. Like, I'm gonna just be real with you guys, and it's not like it's an exclusive first descendant thing. This happens with uh, the bulk of live service games. And a lot of live service games. Like, look at something like New World. New World came out with an immense amount of buzz. And is that game... Did that game sustain that level of buzz? No. And I'm not saying First Descendant is going to die off. It's just going to cool off. And that happens with literally every live service game. Helldivers 2, it cooled off as well. It's just remarkable that game has been able to sustain, you know, 100,000 concurrent players on Steam, which is a incredible feat. Look at Pal World. It's not a live service game, but that game peaked at over 2 million. It's down to like 30k now, 20k, but it's going to get an update or it got an update recently, and obviously interest will resurge up and down for a live, uh, an early access game like that. Excuse me. And same thing with the live service game. It's just Hell Divers uh, 2 was able to sustain 25 to 30 percent of its peak. That's an incredible feat. First Descendant, let's see if it can sustain 25 to 30 percent of its peak. Um, and I don't know if that's going to be the case. Right now, it's below that, but that's because the servers are disastrous. So uh, that's not really fair to gauge it right now. And again, we'll get a real understanding probably a month or two. And really, the, into the midst of Season 1, I think we'll get a real idea into where this game is going to settle at. But the four-month trajectory and the four-month uh, mark tells you a lot more than the initial peak. Right now, it's just a train wreck because the servers are down and it's down to 30,000 players. And I would imagine a large portion of those players are literally in the connecting to server page. I think most people just tapped out and decided to get off for the moment being. And uh, I have not seen any statements on their social media, but hopefully they uh, provide an update for that here shortly. But that is going to do it for me. Thankfully, the disaster situation with the compensation has been remedied because that's just an absolute... Uh, absolute, uh, that, that's disastrous. For a game that's, uh, monetized to this extent, you can't have stuff like that happen. That's just ridiculous. And as far as servers being down, uh, yeah, that is going on as well. And hopefully the servers will be resolved here shortly. And, um, you know, right now it's at 33,000 players on Steam. I think that's more of an indictment on the servers being down across the board for everyone. And hopefully that'll be resolved here shortly. But that is going to do it for me, you guys. Again, uh, thankfully the monetization issues of people buying uh, stuff and not getting uh, compensated with their premium currency, that seemingly has been resolved. They're going to give you some bonuses for, um, you know, for that little mishap yesterday. So that's good. And uh, yeah, servers are a complete train wreck right now. So hopefully that'll be resolved here shortly as well. That's going to do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.